Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Shankar Shastri. I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering, and it's a great privilege to welcome all of you for today's symposium honoring the legacy of a Berkeley pioneer, the world-renowned father of fuzzy logic, Latfi Zade. Uh, I would first of all like to acknowledge uh, Professor Shanaz uh, Shabazova, who led the organization of today's symposium. Shanaz is Latfi's longtime collaborator, a fellow native of Azerbaijan. She was certainly with him uh, when uh, he took leave of us, and certainly it, uh, he, she continues his legacy by now uh, continuing with BISC, the Berkeley Institute for Soft Computing, here in the ESES department. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Shanaz, for organizing this. It's wonderful to see so many esteemed scientists and colleagues here who have come from all over the world. And your presence and the topics of the sessions planned for today's symposium are a testament to the deep impact of Lotfi's work on uh, co computation, computer science, and of course, all of, uh, of sort of the triumvirate of AI, soft computing, and uh, neural networks, all of which are, of course, uh, pretty hot topics nowadays. Um, so, you know, I first met Lotfi when I was a graduate student. I came here as a graduate student in 1977, and uh, I met him shortly thereafter. And uh, he, he played rather a substantial role in mentoring me about uh, all kinds of uh, things. He, uh, uh, he, you know, of course, uh, social things like flea markets and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, also, uh, he used to hold court uh, every morning in, uh, in this, there was a cafe down the street here in, uh, at Hearst called Three Seas Cafe. And I'm sure a lot of you enjoyed uh, having his, uh, having breakfast with him there. And uh, he had a rather invariant uh, menu at this uh, breakfast. He always had the butter crepe with the, just a little honey and a pot of tea. And of course, for a bulky fellow like me, he kept saying, you know, the secret to a long life is to eat less. So I, I was uh, really, uh, and uh, I must say, he, he himself was certainly an exponent of this. Yesterday would have been his 97th birthday, right? 97, or 98, 97th birthday. So it's sort of fitting that we are doing this uh, uh, on the, the day after his birthday. Uh, you know, Lottery was really a polymath. And, uh, you know, after I left, I kept running into all kinds of people, actually, uh, who had had something to do with Berkeley. You know, there was certainly, we were talking about his influence on uh, Eastern European mathematics and Eastern European science and what a foundational role he played. In initially, I think the big, uh, the big uh, connections were with uh, the Soviet Union, but also over a period of time, he, uh, he you know, with the Mos then Moscow State and uh, the USSR, and certainly uh, after that it continued, we heard about the tales of what he did in Romania and uh, in Bulgaria, I know also. And uh, I think that uh, also, you know, he was uh, responsible for founding this institute in uh, just outside Vienna called IASA. I, I, I don't know what the state of IASA is nowadays, but it was really a place for detente between uh, uh, scientists from uh, both sides of the Iron Curtain. And actually, when I finished my PhD, he told me to go be a postdoc in IASA. Uh, to continue this, uh, and I did. I did consider it. It's a, uh, it's in a beautiful castle outside Vienna. And, uh, but uh, anyhow, is uh, I think that Lotfi, as you all know, is in addition to being really an exponent of fuzzy logic, really a, a colorful character, as he called himself. You know, and certainly we are the richer for having had. Uh, a colorful character with a colorful repertoire of uh, of stories, you know, stories about Richard Bellman. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in this area that I am in, in control theory, there is a, 
there was a, uh, a rather well-known personality called Rudy Kalman. Uh, and the story goes that this uh, Rudy Kalman and Latfi had had uh, some early mix-ups uh, in Columbia, at, at Columbia, when Latfi was on the faculty of Columbia and uh, and Rudy Kalman was there. And I must say, well, some of the things we had here were very extensive debates. Uh, Rudy Kalman versus Latvi Zade about uh, fuzzy logic and where fuzzy logic was headed. And uh, I remember uh, Rudy was a rather excitable Hungarian. And uh, Latvi was uh, cool as a cucumber, as you remember. So I could remember in one of these stages in Berkeley, you know, there was this rather livid uh, Rudy yelling, and Latvi sort of taking it all in stride and uh, sort of defending himself. And so, you know, I think that uh, Latvi was not afraid to mix it up scientifically, but he was a gentleman. You know, a gentleman and a scholar and somebody who, be a, who believed in civilized discourse. Uh, and, you know, the art of uh, disagreeing without being disagreeable is really, uh, you know, this is, this, is some, this is one of the, you know, it sounds funny to talk about what somebody taught you, but quite often things that people teach you are uh, these. And uh, <coughs> I got carried away, you know, in telling you this, but... Uh, uh, in my travels once, I ran into uh, this uh, logician at uh, Cornell called Anil Nirod. Uh, Anil Nirod, uh, I was, uh, we were just talking about various things, and Anil Nirod began this long conversation about how he and Latvi had spent a year really arguing about the concept of state and out of uh, the state of a a system that's evolving with time. A and really, that conversation was really what began in his mind to really let him start thinking about Nerode equivalence classes and all of that uh, sort of, uh, uh, that, that machinery, which uh, certainly Latvi also used. He had a book on, uh, on I think it was linear systems theory with Desor, uh, even before he started working on fuzzy logic. So. I think that Lotfi's sort of philosophical bent about thinking about state, thinking about what are inputs, thinking about reasoning, really permeated. Uh, and even now, you know, we do deep learning and we think about uh, uh, correlation versus causation and all of that. You know, Lotfi presaged a lot of this. You know, he, when I first came, uh, uh, there used to be a bulletin board in Corey Hall, on the fourth floor of Corey Hall, which was called Open Problems in Systems Theory. And he would, a anybody was allowed to post a question, but the moderator of the answers was uh, Latvi. And one of the, I remember the very first question is, you know, if somebody gave you a system as a black box uh, with many things sticking into it, what things are input variables and what things are output variables? How do you make a distinction between what are the uh, uh, so somehow the, the inputs being regarded as the causation for the outputs, and uh, you know these are all always really quite uh, deep questions, often difficult to answer. Okay, I'm going to move on just so that you listen to the people that you're he really here to listen to. Uh, institutionally, I have to say I uh, I really deeply appreciate the imprint on the College of Engineering, and a little bit, you know, you have the full bio in front of you, but he came to, uh, he became, he came to Berkeley in the late 50s and then became chair of the Electrical Engineering Department in 1963, just four years after joining the Berkeley faculty. And it was during his tenure as chair, the department's name changed to Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and he had the foresight to expand the scope of engineering to incorporate computer science. But Lotfi's impact would reach much, uh, has certainly reached much further than the Berkeley campus. So much of what we think about, about AI, was made possible by the foundations that Lotfi established more than 50, uh, 50 years ago. In 1965, when he published his seminal paper on fuzzy sets, he brought a different approach to thinking about the strict rules and boundaries of mathematics to explain the world around us. Lotfi's brilliance was that he understood that our world is not clear-cut. 
black and white, and that a framework was needed to accommodate the ambiguity and uncertainty that reflect reality, and certainly also a, an, 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 an addition and uh, perhaps an alternative to probabilistic reasoning. Lotfi's penchant for unconventional thinking, for exploring areas outside the normal boundaries, made him the perfect fit for Berkeley and sort of the spirit of innovation that thrives here. Today, Lotfi's influence is felt in consumer electronics, unmanned vehicles, subway trains, as well as in medicine, weather forecasting, and economics. For all of Lotfi's contributions to science and society, we remain most grateful for what he has done on campus. He was an exemplary citizen of the department and the college. He was always willing to contribute his time and ideas in ways that made the college community, the college community more broadly speaking, mentoring young scientists, spending time with students. Uh, really, he was just totally selfless in, in, uh, in spending his time with this. So. I think we are deeply, deeply grateful to him for the impact that he has done to make the college both a stronger and productive academic community. So thank you all for coming today, and I'd like to turn to the ECS chair, Jim Demmel, to say a few words. Thank you.